weekend, y'all. It is Mark Cordone, episode 34, Golden Mike Live. David Blytus, you are the founder of the Costa Rica Wellness Institute. We need to talk about this, as well as a founder in this system called Jumping Off the Edge Responsibly, or as I like to call it, Joder. Joder. Joder, Joder dude. <laughs> Joder's- now, are you? Yeah. No, you're not in Coast Week. You're in Texas. Right. So no surf for you? No, I'm kind of surf deprivation syndrome right now. Um, I've, I've transitioned <laughs> back and forth and commute, and, like, I'm down there for three or four weeks, and then I come up here for one week, maybe two, depending, and just knocking it out and uh, helping people and, you know, doing what I got to do. And so right on. Yeah, super sweet. But right now I'm, I'm headed back on Thursday and there's a nice swell coming. And so I'll get back to my roots and get in the water, keep my fins <laughs> wet. You know, it's the priority, managing my well-being that way. And when, when, we, when we met like a couple months ago, that's all we talked about for like the first hour was just straight up the surf in Costa Rica. <laughs> so it's yeah, and then, you, then you finally get on the show and like... You're in Texas. <laughs> I know. Be at the beach. I thought you'd be like coming live via satellite, like on the like the waves are behind you. But I don't know. There's like a bunch of numbers behind you, bro. Yeah. What's going on? Well, engineering nerd scientist, uh, geologist. <laughs> you know. Okay, so we're gonna talk about all of that stuff today. I want to know more about you, Dave. Um, I want. I just called you Dave. Is that all right if I call you Dave? Yeah. Dave. Uh, David, David, Finney, Finney's my uh, survey nombre, my my nickname, and but David, I was gonna ask. Someone just th- Catherine just wrote in. Hi, Finney, love your book. Um, so I'm guessing Finney is your is your surfing nombre. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So um, if you are if y'all don't know, Dave also wrote the book, or as I'll call you for the rest of the show, Finney. Finney wrote a book called Jumping Off the Edge Responsibly, and I can't – oh, check it out. Look at the size of that book, son. That's a huge book. It's, it's kind of – What's up, Finney? <laughs> and if y'all don't know, Dave and I wrote – Finney and I wrote our books together, and um, it, it was it was an honor to finish my book with you. Yeah. Um Last night, you know, in the castle, and we had a great experience. That was, you know, it's amazing. That's one of those synchronicities and coming together. What a great group. And Oh, absolutely. Touching point for a lot of the great things we're bringing to the world. And thank you, man, for having me on. And Oh, yeah, you're so welcome. I was so digging being involved in your roller derby world and hearing <laughs> about that and the excitement, all that playfulness, <laughs> that energy that you bring is just so – contagious and um it makes people light up man thank you oh right on dave thank you finney thank you finney now finney finney are you a big fan of the band genesis i love phil yeah what's your favorite genesis song well you know i mean phil collins is always he's one of the best artists in my mind of all time (laughs) no favorite phil collins song i well i would have to go that's a tough one and you know, it goes back a long way. Um, okay, so so I, get I, I, I don't I, like within the first five minutes. I, I got gotcha, you, Finney. I got gotcha. you. I don't know if you know, but Phil Collins, the Phil Collins, is a regular viewer on our show. Right on. He's and so Phil, he's a genius. Yeah. <laughs> Phil, thank you for joining us today. I. I hear see how long I can stay before my boss sees me. <laughs> Phil, sneak it in. Get back to the drums. Get back to the studio. It's good to see you, Phil. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mark Cordone. I'm a positive psychology coach. And all that means is two things. How are you feeling today when it comes to your emotions? Are you feeling good? And then the other thing is on a day-to-day long-term basis? Do you feel like you're living in fulfillment, in purpose, like you're making meaning out of everything? So feeling good and living in purpose. That's all I do. That's all I do. Now, Dave, are you feeling good and living in purpose today? Totally. I, I, feel, <laughs> I feel great. I have so my purpose. 
this and you know it's we're on this parallel journey brother i know it and uh it's so cool to absolutely be- love it, love it. I- yeah yeah Well said, man. Absolutely love it. Now, for those of you who are watching live or on the replay, if you're feeling good and you're living in full purpose today, can you give Finney and I and Phil Collins some hearts? Can you give us some hearts? (laughs) Can you make it pump Costa Rican style, Finney? That's what I'm talking about. Give us some hearts if you're feeling good and living in full purpose today. We got... We got Phil Collins and Christina living in full purpose today. Thanks for joining us, y'all. Um, Christina, thank you, both of you. Your smiles and energy are infectious. That is fantastic. Thanks for joining us, Christina. And I'm loving the dude with the beard in there. What's his name? Um, <laughs> <laughs> look at that beard. That is some commitment right there. <coughs> Bless you. Now, I, I also wanted to throw out there, if, you're, if it's Monday, it's the end of April, and you're like, you know what? I had a really shitty weekend. Um, you know, I'm not feeling so great today, you know? Um, or you're saying, you know, I'm going through a part of my life where I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what my, my purpose is right now. That is all right. It's all right to be going through those things, y'all. It's all right to be feeling the feels. Give me a thumbs up. If you're going through that, because that's an awesome part of your life as well. Christina, thanks for introducing us to Big Steve. Big (laughs) Steve's got the big old beard. Big Steve, hope you're watching. Love you. Catherine came in with the big old heart. So you can also give us the thumbs up. Now, this is the thing. Whether you had an up week, a down week, or you're just all around right now, if you're feeling good about the future, if you're feeling optimistic, can you give us a big old wow face? <laughs> wow face! Wow face! Oh my God, <laughs> That is fantastic! <laughs> that is fantastic. So without any further ado, we've been just chatting it up here the first 10 minutes. I want to get into your story, Dave. Finny, we got a big old wow face. We got a big yeah. old wow face for Big Steve and Christina. Big Steve and Christina, double wow face. Um, awesome. Now, Dave, if, uh, if you could tell us about, yeah, tell us about your story. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an amazing journey I've been on, and um, you know, I was kind of born in West Texas, and we moved to California when I was two, and I was always a water baby, and of course, we started going to the beach. And I found my love, you know, and my passion. It was the ocean. It was being by the water's edge. And, you know, everything made sense there. I was drawn to it. They couldn't keep me out of the water. And, um, you know, so I always knew from early on that's where my purpose would be aligned with and around that. It was kind of the source of connecting all the dots and the energy circle and everything that aligns and gives me my focus and purpose. And... um, but so I grew up in, in L.A., man, and it was amazing in the 70s and the 80s. I went to Samuel High and uh, we used to go down the ramp and go to the beach on the weekends all the time with my parents. And we moved out to Malibu. My dad was an attorney. You know, these were wild times, man. It was <laughs> 10 years old with my skateboard down <laughs> West L.A. I mean, it's not <laughs> anymore. It, I, it scares me to think if my son had been doing that you know and living in that world and you know it's changed a lot and um you know and i had a rough time really growing up my parents were they were fighting a lot my dad was an amazing attorney and provider and he worked really hard for us and uh my mother she was grappling with things you know she had a prescription drug addiction and she was suicidal and my parents fought a lot and uh I managed to get through it, though. I managed to get through high school and go on to college. And um, But, you know, I got out of L.A. There was a calling for me to leave. I needed to, something was shifting. And, um, you know, even though I wanted to go to Hawaii and, and surf, you know, there wasn't much encouragement about that. I got the whole conversation, you know, cut your hair, man, get a real, <laughs> go to college, you know get in line, everybody get in line, that kind of thing. And 
you know, Finny, you total you surfer bum, Finny. I know, right? <laughs> and so I was having a hard time with that, but you know, I succumbed to that, to the reasonableness, and and I got in line and I went, and it was amazing being in Colorado, and I fell in love with geology. You know, I always loved the rocks. Um, you know, my grandfather planted some really cool seeds. Uh, early on when I was about five or six, because we would go back to Texas, you know, at summer for a few weeks and at Christmas to visit. And my grandparents were there. And he was out there one afternoon. We were watching the deer pass, you know, on these hills in West Texas. And he picks up these rocks and he's like, you know, this rock used to be on the bottom of the ocean floor. And I'd be like, no. <laughs> and he's alive and I'm like no and he's like really and I was stuck at that point on I've been tasting rocks and you know <laughs> ever since so I mean that's what I went on in college to do and I became a geologist and a, a minor in petroleum engineering and um, so that's been 35 years but all okay. before is I'm a surfer and I love right the planet and respect people and love helping people and providing energy um you know to the world um that was a big part and ironically now you know i've been a, a professional coach also for 25 years um you know and that kind of fell out of my oil and gas business and working in these multidisciplinary teams and bringing you know what i love to the party you know, efficiency and generating uh economies of scale and delegating. I, I really have a gift for seeing what's missing and sure. how to implement it efficiently and have projects turn out, you know, be implemented on time, on budget kind of thing. And so I kind of got a reputation for that. And people would call me back after we finished these projects, you know, and they'd be like, dude, we miss you. You know, there was some <laughs> the party. And yeah. so we want some more of that. So even though I might not have had another project with them, I began consulting and helping to put in that edge and creating that accountability structure and for responsibly delivering the goods. Okay. So, so ironically, now I'm transitioning out of my oil and gas sector entirely. And it's not easy to get out after you've been doing something for 35 years. But, you know, I've had this voice in my head for the last five or six years, and it's gotten louder and louder. And, and really, it's about, you know, I'm I'm really committed to a less hydrocarbon dependent society and working with energy of people and providing mm. healing. And uh, so that's what I do. I mean, it's totally my calling. And uh, I started the Costa Rica Wellness Institute last year and uh, where we met last year when, when we were yep. writing books and, you know, getting, you know, organizing how best to get our message out there in another format. And so, Pretty much, uh, that's full circle. You know, I've got uh, just a love for this stuff, you know, and helping people design, you know, discover, design, implement, you know, and then holding the edge in for them, you know, bringing that responsibility and accountability to the party and then getting out the other side, you know, giving people permission to design and live the life they really want to have. Mm. Now, uh, let me ask you this. Let me ask you, well, before we even go there, we got to give a shout out to our boy, Jorge Mark. It's good to see you, Jorge. Nice haircut, he says. Yes, I got the edges <laughs> taken down a little bit. I'm going on a few little trips. So I figured I'd look uh, fresh and so clean on those trips. Jorge says, hi, David Blytus. You can call him Finny, Jorge. We're all friends here, all right? Oh, man. <laughs> Jorge, we're waiting for your big uh, invite, your big invite, Jorge, if you're watching. So I, the thing that I'm, I'm hearing, David, is, is that for so much of your life, um, you have really trusted a lot of your intuitive callings and those, these intuitive hits that you're getting. Yeah. And um, sort of the idea that, like, wh when something feels right for you, you just do it. You know, even if it's after 35 years of in the industry or whether you're a <laughs> three-year-old and you're like looking at the ocean for the first time and you're like, yeah, this is where I'm going to be the rest of my life, you know? <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, without any kind of, um, without any kind of like uh, 
the jerkiness in my voice. I just wanted to follow up with how is that working out for you? You know, I love it. I love it. It's really been, you know, I've always been this kind of a fearless risk taker and there's a high price for that. And, you know, you gain experience over life. You learn how to jump off these edges um, responsibly, and, you know, and you crash and burn sometimes, but you know, when you stick with something and you're committed to it, you know, there's a design to it. There's a whole mechanism. And yeah. uh, so, and I respect and love that. It's kind of like the ocean's my teacher. So every morning when I'm paddling out and I'm out there, I'm surfing, you know, yeah. normally surfing in places that are fairly remote, um, really kind of go to the open spaces and, and get away from the crowds. Yeah. Uh, and there are exceptions, but, uh, the ocean is my muse. I get life lessons every morning. There's time to meditate out there and just connect. And so really mindful of that and uh, replenishing all that, you know, keeping everything in alignment. Um, you know, it's, it's real simple, actually. I, I kind of, you want me to just go through my little cycle? It's sure, absolutely. And, and before you even go through your little cycle, I love how you use the idea or the metaphor the real life metaphor of, um, of, of the ocean and sort of surfing and sort of the barrels that yeah. you're, you're handling over there in, in, in Costa Rica, because those are some pretty gnarly barrels, dude. <laughs> those, those can wipe you out, you know? Um, but to be able to sort of, to be able to sort of look at them fearlessly every single time and you're like, I could, this one could wipe me out completely for a couple months, or this could be a, a wild ride. And right. that's the risk that I'm going to take. I love that kind of, I, I love how you sort of embody that with, with your, your, um, your Joder system. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Jumping off the edge responsibly system. Yeah. So talk, walk us through it right now. I'm, I'm right on. I, I love the book and I can't wait for you to walk us through it. Yeah. Right on. Well, I just want to say one thing before I go there is that, you know, so I'm not, I'm human. I have the same dilemmas, questions, concerns. <laughs> So I have fear sometimes, and I just mm. do it. I've trained myself. I, I know pretty much what my triggers are. And, um, you know, there's always something that's unexpected that can come up, and you've got to dance with that. But that's what mm. I, all the experience is about. And, but very seldom do I experience fear in the ocean anymore. Um, I have such mm. a respect and understanding, and the relationship is so strong because of this system that I'm teaching in my Joder system. And um, so... Jay jumping, um, you know, it's a, it's a metaphor for going from one point to the next point. So really what that is, there's a real simple uh, model that I use and cognitive dissonance um, you know, <laughs> for beliefs, right, that we have. And we're kind of born into this mechanism, this design, um, and we kind of don't choose about it. And we're taught these things and we believe it. We don't question them, them often enough or deep enough or at all in some instances. You know, it's kind of our human condition. And we learn how to question and grow and evolve all that, you know, and break up those old ideas, those old paradigms. And then you do that by transitioning to something I term decognitive dissonance. You know, and that's okay. really where our creativity and imagination live, you know, so over on the cognitive dissonance side, it's all kind of limited. It's not a real creative space. It's kind of a, this is the way it is. It's kind of what's missing in our education system. We're indoctrinated into this, you know, do these things, do your homework, make these grades, go to this school, get this result, you know, get in line. Yep cut your hair, get a real job, don't <laughs> bed, you know, you're taught all that stuff, but at some point you realize you look really damn good with red hair, or, you know, you look good when you're surfing yeah. every day, because you're just, who you <laughs> that's when it's, you know, that self-expression and leadership emerges. So, Finney, let me, uh, let me make sure I'm getting this, the, the idea of cognitive dissonance yeah. is, is the idea of, um, we sort of get indoctrinated or we're, uh, we're sort of fed the army ant way of thinking, like sort of this is the way you do things and this is, that's how you'll be successful according to these standards, 3.5 babies by the time you turn 35 or something, right? Um, blah, 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 blah. 
And is the cognitive dissonance the part where you begin to start thinking, well, I want something different. And so is that the tension? Yeah, it's the tension in there. And it's, well, really, you're not, when you're in the state of cognitive dissonance, it's a deep rooted belief. You're kind of indoctrinated into this whole ideology. And mm -hmm. not really, it's something that when it's questioned or challenged in you, then you have uh, this ability, you know, kind of a desire to defend it, to justify it, to rationalize it, even if you're presented with evidence that that's not true anymore. And one of my favorite ones is this whole vortex solar system and this, you know, that we're in the universe and we're spiraling on this trajectory, you know, all the planets are going around the sun and the sun is going 70,000 kilometers an hour and we're like flying on this wild ride through space. I mean, that's reality, right? But when I grew up, they, there was like a picture and it was the solar system and it wasn't moving, it was static. So and, chill. You know, there was a sun in the middle and there were all the planets and you know, Pluto was still there. And, uh, Pluto. Pluto's got thrown out and pulled back in. I mean, yeah, poor Pluto. But now that's a, an example of an archaic paradigm because of this new spiraling vortex. So it's part science, but part creativity and imagination. And there's some really great um, video out there that are animations of the vortex and mm -hmm. really what's happening. So that would be cool to go Google. I actually have it on my website. Um, oh, right on, right on. So we do have, we do have Costa Rico wellnessinstitute.com clickable after y'all listen to the rest of the Joder system. Right on. So you can click on that anytime. So I want to go into the decognitive dissonance. Is this more of the, the idea of unlearning some of those things that we thought were reality that could right. be more illusions exactly That's okay very well put so it's the creative spot side it's where your imagination you give yourself permission to design discover design implement you know a lot of times if we're in a right and wrong world or black or white um, that's over on the cognitive dissonance side. But the decognitive dissonance side is more of uh, what works and what doesn't work. There's really no right or wrong. So once you get out of that cognitive dissonance thinking of a right or wrong world, and you allow yourself the possibility to check it out in the creative side, you can start modeling multiple interpretations, and you start designing in your area of optimal aptitude, ability, and skill set. And then your creativity and imagination soar. And then you're free. And then you have no restraints. And then what happens is you start getting this download of all this information from the collective consciousness, from our universal knowledge and wisdom. All this stuff just starts channeling in when you're in alignment. So this is the circle I was describing before. Dude, What's, what rocks are you biting into? <laughs> you get on this natural progression of this whole thing, man. And it all makes sense. And you're really no, it's free. Once you can get to that place, you're free. But what happens is there's this gap. So, um, and I've termed this gap. So I'm going to introduce another term. Okay. You have cognitive dissonance and you have decognitive dissonance. And then in the middle, it's called the SIG, your suffering index gap. So there's the amount of time it takes if you are stuck. And I'll give it a life example of mine. Um, so I had this belief and I was kind of, um, I, I love my dad, uh, you know, decades ago, right? But I hadn't seen him in like five years. I was kind of withholding my time. You know, I was busy. I was start, you know, I was working and things were happening. And I was living in Texas at the time. And he was in California and I was doing work. And, you know, it was just life was happening, right? And, um but nevertheless, I could have hopped on the plane. I could have been calling him more, but I kind of fallen out of relationship with him. And I really started that graded on me. Once I got this distinction and I was withholding my love. And uh, once I got that, so I got that on the decognitive dissonance side, I came up with another interpretation and that, you know, I can include this. I don't have to have it be this way. I, you know, and I was on the plane two days after that, and I was in L.A. having breakfast with my dad, telling him how much I appreciate him and what a great job he did. 
and how much I loved him and how, you know, my life has turned out and thanking him, like, real, like really, like genuinely. And um, so, so that, it can come that quick. Yeah, well, it can come that quick when you when you shift over to the decognitive dissonance side of things. Right. Uh, this example, it took me five years before I had. I was working inside of this model, so that was my yeah. sig. So that was an example of a sig of five years. So I I was born in this world and I had all this history and this background, <laughs> and it was five years before I did this work and was able to generate that breakthrough and work that solution out for myself. So this is mappable across all the domains and all of our areas. You know, there's small edges, there's medium edges, there's huge edges, you know. And this one with my dad, it's a pretty big edge. I mean, yeah. you know, family, that's your people, right? You want to yeah. be there. You want to connect with that. So, um, but that's an example of the suffering index gap. So how okay. can you stand to have your life be? How quick can we generate another interpretation that forwards our optimal aptitude, ap aptitude, ability, and skill set. To oh my God! You and our creativity, me. imagination, freedom. To go to download the collective consciousness, and it's all coming our way. <laughs> and you're so free. And then all you got is love, and giving it away, and giving it away, and helping people them discover, and design, and implement, and then holding the edge, and being there with them, and this cooperation and collaboration. Because okay, now you you've used the word edge more than a few times. Yeah. And, and also at the same time, your book is, it talks about sort of jumping off that edge and, and, and to give even more clarity to, to what you mean by edge. Can, can you, can you really go and dig into sort of what you mean by that? Sort right. of what, what edges are we standing at? Um, <laughs> what are the edges that we're jumping off of? Exactly, exactly. So um, an example of an edge could be um, maybe you're not digging your life, uh, your job. You know, maybe you're bummed out. Maybe you're not aligned with your purpose as you started this program, right? Yeah. You've had a bad day. Um, something is going against you. You're out of alignment. So, so once you can distinguish that and own, you know, what's missing, what's the problem, really – then you can find where that edge is. And so the edge would be the solution is putting in what's missing and holding that line being ha that's having personal integrity. Gotcha. Gotcha. Edge. But you've got to know what it is that you're designing from towards, you know, so we never run from anything. We go straight through. You can't go around this stuff, man. You go through <laughs> you have to repeat the lesson. So, yeah. but the edge is that, and there are many okay. edges, um, but it okay. is a great illustration and there's huge edges and there's, you know, small edges. Um, you know, an example of a small edge would be cleaning your room or doing the laundry or, you know, that was a procrastination or, you know, right. whatever, yeah. you know, but so getting that a little bit more aligned with your integrity. Gotcha. So deliver the goods. So it sounds like we don't just, have one edge, but we're constantly jumping off of edges or approaching edges. We constantly are coming into cognitive dissonance with new things. And even as we get a new awareness for something, there will be co cognitive di dissonance, even for that new awareness yes. when it doesn't serve us or, or, or it doesn't, uh, I don't even know if it doesn't serve us makes any sense, but uh, uh, we will continue to push the boundaries of what we know. And that means coming to new edges. Exactly. It's, it's a gotcha. progress. There's no right answer. There's just better questions. And so you continue opening it up and opening it up and opening it up. And so it's all a model and we use these metaphors. So, so we're kind of dealing with Jay for jumping. So, okay. Uh, now, so before we go into off, I wanted to talk about cognitive agility with yeah. you because I, I do think that's a big piece of jumping that I don't want to ignore. Molly, it is good to see you on the show. Say hi to Finny. Finny, meet Molly. Hi. Nothing but <laughs> we, love, Molly. Nothing but love. All good. Um, so uh, what, what is this idea of cognitive agility? Right. So that really holds together um, these four terms. So you have cognitive dissonance, and you have SIG, and you have cogn decognitive dissonance. And cognitive agility is 
developing a practice and some sense of mastery with these three terms and getting decreasing your suffering index gap. So you get real good at owning your stuff that's stopping you, your cognitive dissonances, and real good at generating new interpretations, reasons, ways to make your magic happen that are in alignment with your optimal aptitude, ability, skills. <laughs> that's basically three. And then the download goes so align with the collective consciousness. So this is the thing. So, and it's totally duplicatable. And so this is what I teach and I generate with people. And so, but then we have real specific ways. And so once you get good at that, your cognitive agility is really kind of off the chart, right? You're kind of your own. Oh my gosh. And what I, what I love about this is the idea that cognitive agility yeah. is one of the solutions to shortening the suffering index gap. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because now you're talking about jumping through wormholes, yeah, right? Because yeah. like wormholes would be, Suddenly, you know, you know, you see the cognitive dissonance, you see the decognitive dissonance, the solution. And as you're shortening that gap, you're easily moving to these new solutions in your life versus waiting five years, yeah, right. 10 years. Right. As, it's, as the gap is shortening through cognitive agility, right. you really are moving at, at this pace that you never dreamt you right. could move at. And it's is so, that? Yeah, you're, you're nailing it. So, okay. Yeah. Once you get good inside this model and using these terms, you know, it's like, this is how you identify your triggers. We all have these things that were, you know, that get us, you know, it's not what you're worried about that gets you. It's that thing you never see coming that gets you. <laughs> right. So there's a solution. If you have time to think about it and map it out and make things work. And this is an important skill. And this is also inside of cognitive agility. Um, oh, that's fantastic. That's, this is jumping. That's the first this is the first that's just number one friends that's one joder yeah that's that's one of joder what's the o so okay so o is about integration um so off you know it's really about aligning all of your areas body mind and soul okay so and and we i break this down into a lot of subcategories because it's everyone's so unique and we all have our own kind of special quirks and gifts and talents. And so when I start working with people, we define this. And um, it's super cool because this is where it really opens up. Uh, and, and, and further, a subcategory inside of this would be you have a, a social, a physical, social, cultural, and spiritual um, down below that. And so, and these all have their own subcategories. So uh, oh my God. we really don't have time to go into it. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd really dig just to kind of, you know, if you have any questions about this, but I'd love to get through these other places. Cause I, you know, it's so cool being with you and we could, we could do this. I know, bro. Days. I mean, you know, it's like, I know. Well, when I, when I'm talking about when, when, or when you're talking about integration, right. body, mind, and soul, sort of that holistic integration is, is, is what I'm, I'm, I'm hearing. But then when you threw in something like social integration, and I think there was one more external thing, well, or things that we physical, visualize. Physical, social, cultural, spiritual, there's four. So cultural, right? Physical, so social, cultural, spiritual. So, so we're talking about things that are like in harmony with nature type of integration too. Because really my whole teaching is about the individual being sustainable individual. And once there's a sustainable individual, right, that has high cognitive agility, right, who is in alignment and having an integrated life, body, mind, and soul, so diet, rest, not enough, you know, you, you gotta get plenty of love, you, yeah. you don't wanna have too many parties, you, I mean, you gotta watch out for all the chemicals, you know, you yep. wanna get rid of, you know, you want to be in balance. You want to get good sleep. Um, you know, it's, it's real important to stay sharp because this is the gift, man, is giving this stuff away. Um, and then the body, the mind. We're not our mind. We're minding our mind. We're consciousness minding our mind. 
You don't have a mind. People see that's another thing of cognitive dissonance. People think they have a mind, but really, you know, I think that it may be that there's only one mind, and that we're all phasing in and out of this consciousness depending on where we are in and out of alignment. I mean, it's a very vast, complicated, multi-dimensional universe, and we're just scratching the surface. You know, things are accelerating rapidly now, and this is this is all a model. So this is me speaking as a science nerd, right? So there is this whole model of thinking that this is right and wrong, which I touched on, but that's yeah. accurate. It, it's always transitioning to our next highest level of consciousness. And we're all a party to this. And we can all be accelerated or we can be in like a state of flux or we can be stuck. So mm. you get to choose about this. You get to choose suffering or greatness. And so I'm obviously choosing greatness. I know you're choosing greatness. Um, and, and that becomes, you know, one of the design tools that we mm. use in our, to our advantage, to our favor. And, and let me just relate this back to, to uh, the integration, back to the idea of cognitive dissonance, decognitive dissonance, because I know this is a lot that can definitely watch the, the replays, y'all, because this is a learning moment for me as well. But I see the the more the more you're practicing integration, right? Um, the more you're unlocking cognitive agility, right? The less the less integrated you are, the less self care that you're engaging in, the less um, the, the the less uh, you know sort of the, the more sleep deprived you are, the less you're able to have that cognitive agility. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So all of those things are self-love. That's all self-care, self-respect, self-love, right? And so to the degree, that's just a way of being in alignment. That's another measure, right? I mean, we're all, we all know that. I mean, it's kind of common sense. It's in the collective consciousness. I mean, it's kind of intuitive. Um, but sometimes we're out of alignment. And maybe we party too much and, you know. Yeah. Bill, that concert was off the hook, man. <laughs> or, you know, we had a great weekend. Or you know, I mean, yeah. it's human, right? It's, yeah. it's good to have it and let it not have you. So that's another mm. distinction. Is so that when you're in cognitive dissonance, it has you. But once you shift over to cognitive decognitive dissonance and and encompass the practice of cognitive agility and shortening your sig, then you have it. It no longer has you. And even though, so fear is a perfect example here. Mm, mm. Have fear and include it and do it anyway. But you mm. will disappear that stuff to the degree that you increase your cognitive agility. <laughs> and uh, I mean, what I'm looking at when you're talking about you, it having you when you're in cognitive dissonance is all, almost having the, the victim consciousness. Yes. You, yes. you, are, you are trapped. Yes. By everything, right? Yeah. Versus the decognitive dissonance is where you are creator. Right. Right. Uh, you know, you as you as creator. I yeah. oh, I love this. Whole, now you have the, the okay, the, sorry. The whole cognitive dissonance side is where the the ego lives. So decognitive mm -hmm. dissonance is where the soul lives. So oh. we are a soul. You have a body. The body is on the cognitive dissonance side. And the soul is in the decognitive dissonance side. This is where the whole spiritual alignment and, you know, integration download from the universal knowledge and wisdom, you know, and the whole ideology of one mind and phasing in and out of this multidimensional universe. You know, it's, it's a really great model. And so we never get there. It's always so then the next best set of questions gen generates the next best solution. Mm. Um, and I used so I'm going to bring in a new metaphor, bridge. Okay. okay. So, and I'm kind of I'm going to kind of jump ahead a little bit. Okay. Just jump responsibly. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's fun because if you don't, if it, if you make too many jumps irresponsibly, you're not going to. Be... <laughs> it will it will bite you, man. <laughs> How about this? Let's call it the bridge. Okay. So you can integrate the two together. The bridge. So um, it's kind of like, uh, and I like to call it the dimensional bridge. So I use a 3D uh, reality 
that's cognitive dissonance reality. Um, and it's also where gossip lives, um, there's the suffering index lack, gap is high, um, there's a lack of love, there's war, there's no sustainability, um, it's the old paradigm, it's an archaic system, it's right and wrong. Um, and then when you get out on the bridge, it's kind of this awakening, which is what you hear people speak of. And that's mm. kind of why I came up with the metaphors to design all of this conversation that's in our collective consciousness that's going on in the world now to illustrate this. Um, so when you're out on the bridge, you're aware, you're kind of looking back, you're practicing your SIG, you have a degree of mastery with your cognitive agility, and you see the other side of the bridge. So when you're on the bridge, that's a 4D dimension. And the 5D dimension is the <laughs> cognitive agility dimension. It's where freedom is, it's, there's no war, it's loving, it's giving, it's generous, there's cooperation, there's collaboration. All the solutions live there, all the creativity and imagination. This place that there's a sense of altruism. And Einstein called it this benevolent universe. <clears throat> yep. I, I don't know how much you've read of his work, but he's amazing. Not only is he an amazing mathematician and scientist, but more what I appreciated and loved about this guy is that he was a philosopher. Yep. I loved his ideology. I mean, his quotes are awesome, and I got a ton of them in my book. Um, he's the man. He's one of my favorite mentors. Um, well, so, well, let me let me yeah. ask you let me ask you this. So, sort of going from the edge and taking your first step onto the bridge, right. it sounds like a very individual journey. Yeah. Um, and, and so at first I was like. Okay, this is this this can be even seen as as the individual process of the hero's journey, right? Yeah. Um, but then when you're talking about getting to the destination place, you're talking about the benevolent universe, a place where um, sort of uh, there is a lack of 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 war. There there is a, an abundance of of love. You're talking about that on on a, a societal scale. Yeah. Well, right? because on every scale. See, that's oh, okay. so beautiful about it is it's mappable across every domain from the oh. small edges to the medium edges to the big edges. This gotcha. Is gotcha. Okay. Mappable everywhere. So once you get, you know, no one's perfect and you can always backslide. And, but, and everything's so critical about our speaking as well. Eleanor Roosevelt um, had this great saying about, um, and, and I break this down into the three places on the bridge. And I have this great graph, this chart that shows all of this. Uh, that's a really neat tool. And it's kind of, you know, it's at the end. It's, it is kind of the edge. And it's called um, uh, the pause principle, mastery of mindfulness. And uh, so I use this technique for people to orient themselves in life. And to use this as kind of a roadmap, this, this bridge, and so as you evolve and you go further and you're spending more and more time in this 5D world, you, you now know that you're out there. Now you're creating the 6D future. And at some point, you're, so now your mission, once you're over here, is to have all the people on the 3D side get on the bridge and get to the 5D side. And at that point, there will be a 4D side and a 5D bridge and a 6D future. It's all replaceable. It's in our best thinking. It's about helping people discover, design, and implement, then putting in the edge with them and holding them accountable and responsible for generating the results. And so that's what I love to do in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Um, okay. So out to group sessions and then the um, life by design retreats in Costa Rica are just <laughs> That's where the magic happens, you know. That's the fast way. I love it. I love it. Um, by the way, Catherine tuning in saying, thanks, Los MM, to be safe from my MLO. No idea what's going on. <laughs> She's, Catherine is my girlfriend, and she is so out there. She's an amazing person. Um, she has this gift. She's an amazing artist, not only, but a cook. She can do everything. She can draw. She does stained glass. She can do anything with plants. She knows all about how designing chemicals out of our life. 
Um, and her primary focus and purpose is say goodbye to chemicals. Um, Woo! So she, Catherine in, are you in Costa Rica? Is, is Catherine in Costa Rica? Is she in Texas? She's in Texas now. She's going back. She's from Des Moines, Iowa. And she has a okay. family up there. She's going on next week. And, and then she'll be back in Costa Rica in a few weeks. So. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, uh, it's like uh, it's like Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. So welcome to the family, Catherine. So um, let me. So I wanted to go back to this idea of crossing the bridge. Yeah. Um, because at first, the way that I interpreted it, it was you take a personal journey, but to actually get to that that dimension, that fifth dimension, everyone has to be there in that fifth dimension. Everyone must convene at this fifth dimension. No. But now what I'm hearing is. Yeah. Oh, no, now what I'm hearing is oh, <laughs> basically very similar to um, uh, uh, Plato's cave, right? So, so everyone is within this cave, and they're looking at the illusions being projected on the wall. One person escapes the cave and sees that there's a reality outside of that cave, right? right? So they come back into the cave, and that's sort of that help people get to that fifth fifth dimension type of piece but then once people get out of that cave let's say that they have a new reality and there's they're on the grass they're looking at at, at the world around them and, and one of these people starts to elevate right so it's a new type of dimension that they're 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 living in everyone else doesn't have to elevate elevate but just that person living in a new dimension gives people the idea and plants the seed that oh we haven't reached ultimate dimensionality here. There is another dimension. Is that right. what I'm hearing, Dave? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. That's very well put. And so, okay. uh, and you bring up a great, you introduce a new cop topic and the whole energy body. You know, we're taught this whole, really, people are kind of stuck in this physicality, ego, cognitive dissonance model on the 3D mm -hmm. side of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And once they get out on the bridge and they start working with these models and these terms and integrating their life fully, you know, then the magic starts to happen and they, they begin to cross and then they can bring others with them, their family. And then that grows out into their, you know, business and work environment, into the community, right? And so that's what I call socially. And then socially grown is culturally. So that, so that becomes that. And then spiritually is once you become aware of and start really grasping and feeling this singularity of our consciousness and our real oneness, our connection. So okay, so when you're out on the waves, I know you think about something beyond spirituality. Yeah. There's another dimension. What is that? Oh, man. I, you know, I just, what I connect with out there, I, you know, I, I can leave, um, my energy can leave my body. Uh -huh. um, I actually have really good experiences of flying around and, and then coming back, and uh, you know, I, and I'm, I think it's pretty common. There are lots of us that do this, um, but it's really being aware that we're not, we aren't this body. We are a soul. We are. We've all been here before. We all have this knowledge and wisdom and experience in us to draw on. Some of us just remember it more than others, but mm -hmm. everyone is capable of accessing it. That's mm -hmm. all in this model. That's all in the conversation. That's what's so beautiful about it and helping everyone, you know, because inside of this benevolent universe and this altruism kind of a thing, that's where our love and joy is. That's what makes us human. That's why humans are such amazing animals. It's this cooperation and collaboration is our advantage. You know, and it's our ability to change and adapt quickly that gives us that tactical advantage over everything else that we're aware of this, to this point. But it's really our beautiful, the thing we love about each other, right? That's why you're my brother, man. Yeah, you're my brother too, brother. Uh, you're my brother too, brother. Um, so let's talk this. The last piece, we're going full circle, right? So we're talking about jumping, and then we're talking about responsibility, or right. responsibly. So what, what do you mean now when you're talking about jumping off the edge responsibly? Right. Okay, so the responsibly part is really... Once you've designed and discovered what your purpose is, how your optimal aptitude, ability, and skill sets are in your world, um, making a plan so that you really have the life that you 
want, the one you really want, not the compromise one, not the reasonable one, not the what if one day one, but that one that really lights you up, that one that you know is, is the track for you now. Now it can change and it'll grow and it'll evolve, but it's about really getting in motion and in action, giving yourself permission to start accessing that one. So mm. that's what it's responsibility because that's when you make your optimal contribution to the world. That's when the beautiful thing shows up, man. When you're aligned and responsible and all those things are happening, that's when you're lit up. That's when your gift comes out and your optimal contribution comes into society and the world. And money is a consequence of that. It makes me crazy. I hear all these people you know, talking about make this amount of money in this many days and this and the money and the money and the money. I think money is great. It's just a form of energy and it gives us freedom and ability and choices and options. And, you know, it's magic. It, it, it's energy. And but I think that the better way to look and think about money is money is a consequence of doing what you love. Well, when you mm. when you do the Joder system, you get to this place where you have this magic in your life you weren't accessing before. And I promise you, money will come to you when you get yourself to that place and you're real and authentic and living that way. That's what's so great about it. And then, then you're lit up. I mean, I know tons of people and clients that I've worked with who have, you know, international wealth and jets and yachts and they're not happy. I mean, there are some exceptions and there are degrees, but I mean, some of the most uh, messed up people who have no satisfaction and fulfillment have the most money that I've worked with. It, and not as a criticism, but just as an observation. Mm. So you got to question, why is that? Because they're out of alignment with doing what we've been talking about for this hour. They're at, My they're, it's missing and it's simple. And it's we they can go through this system and they can disappear that stuff and they can have this life with satisfaction and fulfillment. And so that's that's what I'm turned on about is sharing that, and helping people do that. And I love, you know, working with individuals and families and teams. And you know, at the core of this, I'm a relationship coach. <laughs> that's the fundamental thing. Right. And then everything else, once you handle each individual and get them to this place, then they start giving it away. And that's how we have this be um, global sustainability. Oh, really what this is all about because until we th this is the way to solve all these problems we have all these problems we have live in cognitive dissonance all of them our political system the trash fukushima bigotry hatred segregation you know this division people thinking they're a man or a woman no you're a soul man man or woman conversation that's ego that is bullshit <laughs> sorry <laughs> We are people. We are human beings. We are souls, man. Hey, um, do you? I, I love what you're saying, but you could get a little bit more passionate about this, David. <laughs> I'm so withheld, man. I know. I think I'm ready to retire this show and pass the golden mic off to you, man. No, you should host the show, son. <laughs> you know, I love being here with you. You're the best. Uh, likewise, brother. Likewise. So let's talk a little bit more about the Costa Rica Wellness Institute, um, like I know that you're doing some retreats down there in Costa Rica. I just got my passport. I just went up to Canada. I'm thinking I'm ready to go to Costa Rica soon. Uh, and I want to take some people with me, like Molly, Jorge, yeah. uh, Catherine, I'll see you there. Uh, Christina and Big Steve, Phil Collins. I think we should all go down there. Come on. And now, are you using the Joder system there? Yes, yes. Okay. So the Joder system, um, you know, introductory, I just, I do like this 10 session package with an 11 mm -hmm. session free, but then there's the immersion week and that's the Joder system as well. And that's in Costa Rica. And so all that's on my website, Okay. all the details. And there's a great video of the site where we do the retreats, where you'll be staying. <laughs> Dude, where we'll all be staying. First, it's about the first day when you get there is rejuvenation and you get a massage and we do some meditation and yoga and we just hang out. 
and we just let you feel the place and you get grounded and you earth and we walk in the jungle and we go to the beach and you just hang by the pool. You do, it's pretty much a down day. And, and how, how long is the, how long do your, your retreats go for? It's a week. It's from Saturday, it's one, okay. Saturday to Saturday. And um, it's at this beautiful lodge. Go check out the video on the website. And, yeah, uh, the video is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's all <laughs> and And we just go in there. And everybody's program is a little different. Um, yeah. People register. Then they have their specific areas. So their program is designed for them. And so, you know, I do up to 10 people in one week and um, it's, you know, all on availability and, um, you know, but I've also had one person, I do privates for the week, which I mean, you know, that, that's awesome because so much happens, you know, when you have that access and intimacy, the connection that falls out of it is pretty special. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Um, <laughs> yeah. This this this. I want kid, you to come surfing. We're gonna go. So surfing. do I. So do I. So do I. I I I, I totally need to be there. Um, my shoulder is, is there. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to. I'm ready to, to paddle again. It, it, you know, and it's just about having fun and going yeah. at your own pace. You got nothing to prove. It's just to feel the energy and go at your own pace and just connect with all that water and sun and sand. And, and I want to taste those rocks that you've been biting into, man. So <laughs> you're downloading some you're you're downloading some heavy duty stuff on me here, man. Right on. Um. So so definitely Costa Rica Wellness Institute dot com. Check out the video. Um. Y'all, I'm thinking that we all maybe should go there together as a yeah. Beyond Resilient crew and do the Joder system, do some surfing, um, do some yoga, chilling out, um, and, and sort of. Yeah, really identifying our 3D cognitive dissonance that we all get get into because we're going to shut off this thing and we're going to start scrolling through Facebook. Next thing we know, we're mindless again, right? So, like, I would love to get a big jolt of stuff from from this uh, from, from from this week in Costa Rica with with uh, Finny and family, yeah. um, and, and we get to meet the locals and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. love it, love it. You're going to do it. It's a great experience. The country is fabulous. I've lived there 14 years now. Uh -huh. um, it was one of the edges I jumped off of. I designed myself down there. Um, about, I went there about 16 years ago and fell in love with it. The first day in the country with the people and the place and the vibe. I just knew I was at home. I belong. And, and we could talk even more about even how you, Finney, came to design the, the retreat site, yeah. which is fascinating in and of itself. Um, but that's for another time. Just go to the dang website, y'all, and check it out. You can also get the book. Hold up the book for us again. Right look on. at this gigantic book. Look at this. Look at this. Look at my tiny book compared God, to him. Dude, it's the same book as yours. It's, <laughs> it's awesome, man. I dig it. And um, yeah, I love working in uh, these groups and corporate retreats. Um, you know, it's, it's super fun. This work, it will change your life. I promise. It, it's amazing. The results I've produced with clients over the years. And it's got everything in there. It's got the cognitive dissonance, decognitive dissonance, um, all the way to implement and, and practice the pause principle master of mindfulness uh, sheets that are, that worksheets that are there. The whole thing is in the book. So check that out, David, you've said enough. I, 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 I think my zest for life has been totally trumped by David today. Um, and that's my 3D ego talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> but like you, brother, brought it today. So with that said, um, let's do a little visioning exercise. Um, thank you, David, for being here. Um, over in Texas, there is a golden microphone that is now dropping from the ceiling. And do you see it? It's stopping right in front of your mouth, David. Um, and for two minutes, that golden microphone translates into every language all across the world. And so when I flip the golden microphone on, the world is listening. What are you gonna tell us, David? You are now live on the golden mic. Right on. So really, uh, thank you, Mark. And, um, you know, I think this is, these are amazing times that we're living in, a singularity. 
And it's really about uh, the privilege of helping other people, our brothers and sisters. And uh, we're really in a time of great, great opportunity. It's never been a more amazing time to live. And so give yourself permission to design that life you love, that thing that is really the life you want to live. You know, find the way to make it happen. You don't have to settle. You know, it is about our individuality and growing and learning and then teaching and loving and giving back. And we are one. Um, you know, I am because you are. You know, it's a beautiful thing. <coughs> this connectedness is real. Um, we are spiritual beings. Um, this is our human experience. You have a soul. You have. You are a soul. You have a body. Yeah, that and it's criti it's critical once you get that one. Um, but really. At the end, I am because you are. We are one. That's it. And so align with that, brother. <laughs> David, Dave, Finney. Mark. Episode 34. <coughs> I pushed through it with a sore throat. Oh, man. Because of you. Golden Mike 34. This is David. I want you to li like him. I want you to love David. I, I want you to share this video out because he's doing amazing, amazing, amazing work. Um, and this is just the way that I'm going to close it. If you're feeling good and if you're functioning at your full purpose, my question to you is what are you going to do to give back and serve the, the greater good? My name is Mark Cordone. This is David Blytus author of Jumping Off the Edge Responsibly, go to Costa Rica Institute.com. We've got another guest for you. I'm coming at you from New York tomorrow. New haircut. We're going to surf the waves in Costa Rica soon. Right Take care, y'all. Thanks, Mark. Right on. You're, you're welcome, brother. Enjoyed it.